accepted in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you please turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. Say, I mean it from my heart. I love you. You are my brother. You are my sister. In the name of Jesus. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus. I thank God for your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I also greet the leadership of the church in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to declare on behalf of evangelists that we love you and we appreciate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians? Chapter 11, verse 1. First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1 in NIV. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Yes. Can we hear it in a different translation if it is the uh, King James Version or New King James? Okay. You can read it again. First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. It says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Can you also read Genesis chapter 1 verse 16? Genesis chapter 1 verse 16. I'm reading in NIV. God made two great lights. Yes. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. Hallelujah. We are going to be talking under the topic that says a need for mentorship. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, a need for mentorship. Hallelujah. Now, where we have read, the Bible says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Hallelujah. When you take a careful look at your life, you will discover that the majority of the things that you know, you learn them from others. Hallelujah. When you take a careful look at your life, you will discover that the majority of the things that you know, you have learned them from others. Hallelujah. Whether it be celestial things or terrestrial things, whether it be physical things or spiritual things, one way or the other, you have learned from others. Hallelujah. For an example, right from your childhood, for you to can possess the knowledge that you possessed as a child, you had to learn from your parents. Is it not so? Hallelujah. You were not born talking. They taught you at home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the things that you know, you learn them from others. Hallelujah. For you to can possess the knowledge that you know now, you learned it from your teachers at school. Hallelujah. You are not an independent person. There are things which you learned from other people. Hallelujah. That is why the topic of today says, a need for mentorship. Hallelujah. Now, just as it is in the things of the natural, so it is in the things of the spirit. Now, from the text which we have read, we learn about Paul and the Christians whom he was writing to. And both of them, they were Christians. Hallelujah. Both of them, they had the spirit of God in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Both of them, they were used by God. Yet Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. 
Hallelujah. This is the same Paul who says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. The Bible says, Be ye therefore the imitators of God and walk in love. Why does Paul teach us to imitate him and at the same time he says imitate God? Hallelujah. Now the key word says, Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is our roadmap. He is our example. Hallelujah. Whatever that we do, it must imitate Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But you need to understand that as Christians, we are not all on the same level. Hallelujah. All of us, we are equally Christians, but we are not all on the same level as Christians. Hallelujah. One may say, what is the need for me to can have a mentor? It is because as Christians, you are not on the same level. Hallelujah. There are people who know better than you. There are people who have gone ahead better than you. Hallelujah. Some of you, you want to start businesses. There are people who know better than you in what you want to start. Hallelujah. You need a mentor. You can't do it alone. Hallelujah. Whether it be physical things or spiritual things, there are people that possesses a better knowledge than you do. Hallelujah. The people who don't have a true self-evaluation, they never appreciate the need for mentorship because they think they know it all. Hallelujah. If you don't have a true self-examination in yourself, in your life, you will never see the value of a mentor in your life. Yet, what you know, you did not learn it from yourself. Others, they taught you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the grace in this house allows us to have mentorship. Hallelujah. I believe there are people who submitted dreams and Jesus said it is mentorship. Hallelujah. If you are there, can you raise your hand? So, I'm not talking about something you don't know. Hallelujah. You need a mentor. You need a mentor. Hallelujah. Now, what we must understand as Christians is that there is deeper, there is deep, deeper, and deepest. Hallelujah. There is deep, deeper, and deepest. We are not all in the same level. We may all look at one thing but see it differently because our perceptions, they are not the same. When a child is born, the child can see to a certain distance, but when you are an adult, you can see yonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Say, neighbor, you need a mentor. You need a mentor. Hallelujah. Most of us, we are stuck because of what we don't know. And yet other people, they know it and they can help you. But because of our pride, we don't want to can learn from other people. We are proud people. We don't want to learn from other people. We say we can do it ourselves. But look at where you are. Maybe let me ask a question. Some of us, we can testify that when you came here, Things were not working. But when you arrived, things started working. Are you there? Are you there? Is there anybody like that here? Can you raise your hand? You came here and things were not working. But afterwards, things were moving in your life. What is the cause? There are people that you need to connect to. Hallelujah. There are people that you need to connect to. You can't do it all alone and you can't do it all by yourself. 
The problem with the Christians today, they don't have a true self-evaluation. That is why Paul said, God against high-mindedness. There are people who are high-minded. What they profess denies their works. Hallelujah. What they speak with their mouth does not equate with their works. They are high-minded people. And faith without works is dead. If you say you have got faith, there must be works to prove your faith. So why are you talking big when there are no works? Hallelujah. Pride is the stumbling block to growth. It's a stumbling block to growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the person next to you, say you need a mentor. You need a mentor. You need a mentor. Listen, the mentor that you are supposed to have, you are not supposed to seek him or her for yourself. God must guide you. And your mentor, you can see him, whether through dream or in the spirit through vision. Or he also can see you. When you meet him, there's a confirmation. No confusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say neighbor, neighbor, there is somebody that you don't know. He may be here in the house of God. You don't know him. You don't know her. But that person is beneficial to your life. Clap your hands to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in Genesis, what we have read, 116, the Bible says, there are light, but this light, they don't have the same brightness, but they are equally light. They are equally light, but they don't shine the same. But they are equally light before God. But their duty is not the same. Hallelujah. 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 Just as the stars. Stars. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to Jesus Christ. Stars. They don't shine the same way. But all of them are stars. Hallelujah. All of them are stars, but they don't shine the same way. And it doesn't mean that another star is not important. They are equally important because they are equally doing that which they were designed for. The problem with the church today, we are not content with what God has given us. We look at other people, we compare ourselves with and then we rise and fight against them. Why? Why can't you be content with what God has given you? There is no one like you. And there will never be anyone like you. Hallelujah. You need to appreciate what God has given you. Let me tell you the truth. Your honor and your glory, it's not in doing what somebody else does. But it's in doing what God has commanded you to do. Hallelujah. You don't receive glory by doing what others are doing. You receive glory, that is, you receive honor from God by doing what God has demarcated you to do. But why are they fights in the church today? I can stand here and fight against the lead pastor. Yet I am a son in the house of God. How can I come and want to build a house in the same house of my father? Can I go to the house of my father and say, Father, I want to build my own house here. If you are an adult, go and build somewhere. Not in the house of your father. Where is this confusion coming from? Hallelujah. Not being content with what you have. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. I just want to be free. Hallelujah. Your pastor and your leader is appointed by God for you. And if you have got a destiny in God, you can't get to your destiny without them releasing you. Hallelujah. So why are you fighting against them? Hallelujah. You can't get to your destiny without them releasing you. And when they release you, they must bless you. But a bastard child, like the prodigal son, he says, Father, I need what belongs to me. I'm old. I want to go now. Hallelujah. I want to go now. Whatever belongs to me, I want it now. Hallelujah. You can't build a house in the house of your own father. If you are old, go and build a house somewhere. Not in your father's house. What is the cause of the divisions in the church of God? What is the cause of the division? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Am I talking the truth? Am I talking the truth? Hallelujah. Listen, there is no condemnation in Christ. Hallelujah. Christ loves us. He's our Lord, our master. But when there is something incorrect to be corrected, we can keep silent. No, we can't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the person next to you, say, I love you. And I mean it. And I mean it. From my heart, I love you. Where I am weak, you are strong. And where I am strong, you are weak. Therefore, I need you. You need me. All together, we can build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to Jesus. Listen, a man is as deep as the revelation he has. The level of the depth of your spirit, it's according to the revelation you have. Hallelujah. You can't live above your revelation. It is impossible because revelation is enlightenment. It is when God opens your heart, the eyes of your heart, into the world of the unseen. The Bible says, I've come to seek and save the lost. They are lost because they can't see the way. But when the light of the world, who is Jesus, comes, their eyes are open. Therefore, you can be greater than the revelation you have. You are measured by the level of your revelation. And your revelation must be accompanied by works. If there are no works, but you speak revelation, how can we believe you? The Bible says, show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith with works. Hallelujah. When you say, I believe I can do this, can I believe you unless you do it? Hallelujah. 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 You are as deep as the revelation you have. The revelation you have. And the lights are not the same. They are lesser light and greater light. And I thank God that I'm a lesser light. Hallelujah. There are greater light and lesser light. But both of them, they are light. And they are commanded by God to rule. Hallelujah. The greater light is supposed to rule by day, which is the sun. And the lesser light is supposed to rule by night, which is the moon. But both of them, they are commanded by God to rule. You can never find as a moon in the place of a sun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happens when the moon and the sun come together? Hmm? What happens? Those who know science, you can help us. When the sun and the moon come together, what happens? 
Is there no darkness? Eh? Hallelujah. I'm communicating to you. What happens? Eh? There is darkness, right? Hallelujah. Clap your hands to Jesus. Now, many of us, we don't realize the importance of mentorship. But my question is, can we read Ephesians chapter 4, 7 to 10? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 12. It says, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gift to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descend, descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for work of service. So Hallelu that the Hallelujah. The Bible says God has appointed a fivefold ministry amongst which there is a grace for teaching. The question is, if we don't need to be taught, why does God give grace to teach? Hallelujah. If you say you don't need a mentor, no one can teach you. Why does God give grace to the church to teach? Hallelujah. And the Bible says the reason for teaching, it is for the equipping of the saints. It is for the saints to be equipped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, for us to can understand what Paul meant when he said, imitate me just as I imitate Christ, let us go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. The Bible says this church was enriched in all ways. They had the gifts of God. And it is the church which Paul unfolded the gifts of the Spirit of God. And he says to them, you are enriched in everything, in every way. Yet the same people that possessed all knowledge, they did not know what Paul was teaching them. They had all knowledge, but they did not know what Paul was teaching them. What was happening in the church? Let us see it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12 to 13. And I'll keep on doing what I'm doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. Hallelujah. So the problem in the church is that there were people who wanted to be regarded themselves as the apostles of Jesus Christ. But they wanted the honor that Paul Apostle had, but they did not want to walk in the ways in which Paul walked. They wanted honor without processing. Hallelujah. In the things of God, there is processing. Many will rush for results without going through the process. The Bible says, after you have been perfected, you will be complete, like in nothing. The completion doesn't come until you are tested. You must go through the test in order for you to be promoted. Hallelujah. So why do you want the results without the processing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must go through the processing in order for you to can be complete and lacking nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you clap your hands to Jesus? Because as we are preaching, the devil doesn't want us to talk about what we are talking about. Hallelujah. So when we praise God, when the praises go up, his glory comes down. 
Hallelujah. Now, a mentor must not be the one who only speak in the name of the Lord, but he must also walk in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't only speak in the name of the Lord, but you also walk in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus Christ, he is not only the name, but he is also the way. In John chapter 14 verse 6, the Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is not only the name, he is also the way. That is why he said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, have we not healed in your name? They healed in the name of Jesus, but they did not have the way of Jesus. And Jesus said, I don't know you because your ways are different from my ways, yet you are using my name. Hallelujah. We must not only speak in the name of the Lord, but we must also walk in the way of the Lord. And what is the way of the Lord? The way of the Lord is the way of love. Love without hypocrisy. Love without the pretense. In the Bible, there are people who died for other brethren. They loved them because they loved God. And Jesus said, greater love has no one than this than one to lay down his life for another one. Can we lay down our lives for each other? Maybe not by dying, but can I lay down my life for you? Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, can you lay down your life for me? I'm your brother. I'm your sister. Can you lay down your life for me? The Bible say, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you love one another. And what is the cause of us fighting against one another? What is the cause? The cause is envy and self-seeking. To be envious and to have your own desires to achieve. And the Bible says, let not your desires be only for you. Let them also be for other people. Envy and self-seeking. I want to push my own agenda. And when you come against me, I rise against you. Hallelujah. That is why love cannot be complete amongst the brethren. We must appreciate one another. I must love you for who you are in God. And you must love me for who I am in God. Hallelujah. The problem is, do we have God's opinion about himself and about others? Hallelujah. When you have the opinion of God about yourself and about others, you will be content with what you have. You will not exalt yourself above measure. Paul said, I have been given a thorn in my flesh, lest I exalt myself above measure. And it was a messenger from Satan, permitted by God. Hallelujah. 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 Clap your hands to Jesus. Now, Jesus Christ, he is our pattern. He is our example. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, can we read? To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Hallelujah. Can you read it again? To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. The Bible says, for this you were called. Listen, if you are walking in the way of the Lord, you must understand that there will be both good times and hard times alike. Hallelujah. When you follow in the way of the Lord, there will be thorns in your way because the road to your destiny, it is not a bed of roses. When you walk in your spiritual journey, there are serpents and scorpions. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, those who desire to live godly, that is a pure life in Christ, they will suffer persecution. When you are a true believer, you will be persecuted. And don't expect the world to love you because you are not of the world. Why should the world love you? Hallelujah. You are not of the world. The Bible says, I have chosen you out of the world. Where are you now? Jesus said, you are in the palm of my hand. And he said, those who are in the palm of my hand, no one can black them out. Hallelujah. And in the book of Revelation, when you check the palm of the hand of Jesus, the Bible says, there are seven stars in the hand of Jesus. And what is the mystery of those stars? The Bible says, they are the seven angels which are sent to the seven churches. And out of his mouth proceedeth a sword. What is the sword? The Bible says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. When you are in the palm of the hand of God, he continuously speaks to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say, I am in the palm of the hand of God. Nothing can black me out. No. No. Who is greater than Jesus? No one. No one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Clap hands for Jesus. Now, why do you need a mentor? You need a mentor because you need to excel. Hallelujah. You need a mentor because you need to excel in your respective calling. Whatever you are called to do, you need to excel in it. Hallelujah. You must be excellent in what you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we read Acts chapter 18 verse 24? Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. With a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. Continue. Verse 25. He had, he had been instructed in the ways of the Lord mm. and he spoke with great fever mm. and taught about Jesus mm. accurately, mm. though boldly mm. in the synagogue. Mm. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, mm. they invited him to their home mm. and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Mm. Now, listen. Apollos was a mighty man. The Bible says he was mighty in scriptures. And he was accurate in scriptures. But he was limited. He only knew the baptism of John. It was only Priscilla and Aquila who discovered him. And said, this man can speak the word of God. Look at how he's quoting scriptures. But he was limited. When they discovered him, the Bible says they taught him a more accurate way. When you don't have a mentor, you can have a more accurate way. Hallelujah. Listen, when you have a mentor, what you can take in 10 years, you can take in 5 years. Why? Because he has walked ahead of you already. What you are going through is not new to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Iron sharpens another iron. If you are an iron, you need another iron. Praise the Lord. Now, what happened after he was instructed in a more accurate way? Can you read from verse 25? From verse 25. Mm. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, mm. and he spoke with great favor. Mm. And taught about Jesus accurately, mm. though he knew only the baptism of John. Mm. Continue. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Mm. When Priscilla and Aquila had, had him, mm. they invited him mm. to their home mm. and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Stop there. Listen. 
the Bible says, this man, after Priscilla and Aquila spoke to him, he began to be even more bold. Why? Some of you, you have got dreams and visions from God about what you are going to become. But some of you, you are doubting. Hallelujah. You are doubting. You are doubting. The Bible says, when they explained to him a more accurate way, he began to be even more bold to preach about Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your mercy, for your mercy, for your love, for your kindness, for your grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your word. I want to believe this word, Jesus. I want to believe this word in the name of Jesus. Father, I open my heart to the scriptures, the holy scriptures, the scriptures that were inspired by your spirit. Father, Father, please help me. Help me. Help me in Jesus' name. Clap hands to Jesus Christ. Can we read Daniel chapter 6 verse 3? Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Mm. Now Daniel so distinguished herself, himself mm. among the administrators and the satrap, satraps by his exceptional quality. That by the, his exceptional quality. Uh -huh. That the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Mm. The New King James Version says he had an excellent spirit. He had the spirit of excellence. And because of that spirit of excellent, excellence, the Bible says the king wanted to set him over the whole realm. Listen, your excellence will provoke recognition. Hallelujah. Your own excellence will provoke recognition. You don't have to seek recognition. Just be excellent in what you do. You will be recognized. Hallelujah. Just be excellent. Hallelujah. The Bible says, whatever the God of heaven has commanded, it must be done with diligence. There must be diligence in what you do for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have got an excellent spirit, you will be distinguished. They will look at you and say you are different. You are not like others. What is the cause? The excellent spirit in you. Hallelujah. The Bible says your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that God dwells in you by his own spirit? How do I become a failure when the spirit of God is in me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, when you have got the spirit of excellence, Daniel was recognized and the king wanted to set him over the whole realm because of what he did. He was distinguished from amongst many. The Bible says you are a chosen generation, meaning you are selected by God, meaning you are different. Hallelujah. Not only that, the Bible says you are also a royal priesthood. You are royal before God. The Bible says you are the beloved of God. The chosen one, the elected of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says you are the apple of God's eye. You are the apple of God's eye. Hallelujah. 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 Say me and Jesus, we are one. Me and Jesus, we are one. We are one. There is no power that can break the bond between me and Jesus Christ. It is written, he or she who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 
I am one with the Lord and one with a difference. Clap your hands to Jesus. Why do you need a mentor? You need a mentor because you need to be established. Hallelujah. In everything that you do, there must be establishment. There must be establishment. If you seek to build a house, but the foundation is wrong, the house will collapse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need a mentor because you need to be established. You need to be established. That is why, according to the grace of this house, when you want to marry, Jesus said, you must go and fast and pray and establish a foundation for your marriage. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You want to do business, there are scriptures given to you which you must stand upon for your business. It's your foundation. Whatever that does not have a foundation, it will not stand. And if you rush to build while the foundation is not complete, the house will collapse. Hallelujah. 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 That is why many people, they go out and they become corrupted and polluted because their foundation was not complete. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wherever God has placed you, stay there. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, wherever God has placed you, stay there. Stay there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Clap hands to Jesus. Can we read Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22? Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22, it says, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advices they succeed. Can you read it again? Plans fail mm. for lack of counsel. Mm. Plans fail for lack of counsel. Uh-huh. But with many advisors, mm. they succeed. But with many advisors, they succeed. But you must be careful of who advises you. Hallelujah. You must be careful of who advises you. Not every advisor is a good advisor. Not every advisor is a good advisor. Hallelujah. Why? The Bible says, Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the advice of the ungodly. Be careful who advises you. Hallelujah. Some advices, they are for destruction instead of for good. Hallelujah. Be careful of who advises you. Not everybody qualifies to can advise your life. Not everybody qualifies. You need somebody who sent to you by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do you need a mentor? You need a mentor because you need somebody who believes in you. And who can encourage you to be better than you are. Hallelujah. Somebody who believes in you. Why should you stay around people who don't believe in you? Hallelujah. The Bible says evil company corrupts good manners. Hallelujah. When you surround yourself with the people who don't believe in you, they always want to downpress you. You can never grow. You need to surround yourself with the people that know better than you so that they can challenge you and say, Lord, I want to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be careful of who cancels you. But listen, you must love everyone. Hallelujah. Irrespective of the fact that they are coming for good or evil, you must love them. The Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. There is no power greater than the power of love. Never. Never. God himself is love. And there is no one above God. There is no power greater than the power of love. 
Love has got the power to disarm you. Hallelujah. Love sees your motives and cover you to win you from the devil. Can I repeat it again? Love can see your motives and cover you to win you from the devil. The Bible says those who are spiritual, they must restore others. Those who have fallen way into the end of the devil. Restore them. How? With the spirit of gentleness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need a mentor because you need somebody who believes in you and somebody who will encourage you to do good. Any encouragement that comes for me to do evil, I reject it. Hallelujah. You must be encouraged to do good. Why? Because whether good or evil, your works will follow you. And your works are the ones that will testify for you or against you. That is why you must look beyond now. Because the Bible says we shall all appear before the judgment throne of God. To give account of our deeds. Hallelujah. That is why whatever you do, you must not do to please others. But you must do it to please God. Why? Because you are going to give an account to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, whatever you do, you must walk in lowliness of mind and humility. That is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says there must be loneliness of mind and humility. I used to think that I'm greater and better than others. But I repented. Hallelujah. There are those who are greater and better than me. That is why I recognize a need for mentorship. I know that I must learn and grow. But when you think that you are greater and better than others, you can never grow. Why? You can never Benefit from what you do not value. What you don't value, you can't benefit from it. Hallelujah. 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 Can we read First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18? First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, it says, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Can you repeat the last part? So that by? So that by recalling them, mm. you may fight mm. the battle well. The battle well. Listen. It's important to know where you are going. Hallelujah. It's important to know where you are going. Why? If you don't know where you are going, you cannot walk well. You cannot do well. Hallelujah. You must know where you are going. You must know where you are going. Say to your neighbor, say neighbor, what did God say about you? What did God say? Say neighbor, what did Jesus say about you? Are you sure? It's from Jesus walk in it. Are you sure that it's from Jesus walk in it? Hallelujah. Clap hands to Jesus. Most of the things which I do, I send them to Jesus. If they don't have black and red, I don't take them. Hallelujah. If there is no black and red on them, I don't take them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need a mentor because you need to do more than you can ordinarily do by yourself. Hallelujah. You have got a limit. You can do to a certain limit. But when you have a mentor, you can do more than you can ordinarily do by yourself. 
Let us go to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16 to 17. It says, Also, anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, from Abel Mehola, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped, who escaped the sword of Hazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Hallelujah. Now, Elisha was to be anointed in the place of Elijah. The key word there, it's in the place of Elijah. Which means he was going to do what Elijah did. Hallelujah. Because Elijah was afraid of Jezebel. And then for that reason, he was about to ascend and go into the heavens. So God needed somebody who can substitute him. And said, anoint Elisha in your own place to continue doing what you do. Hallelujah. But, Elijah, because, Elisha, because he was not an ordinary son of the prophet, he knew that if I can follow my mentor, I will receive the double portion of the spirit that was upon Elijah. And by that double portion, Elisha began to do more than the Elijah. Why? He recognized Last time we spoke about spiritual pedigrees. He recognized mentorship. The sons of the prophet came and said, do you know that your master is going to be taken away from you? He said, I know. But I'm continuing with him. Why? He saw beyond what they saw. When you read it in the New King James Version, the Bible says, do you know that your master is going to be taken over from you? Which means they saw him ascending. And Elijah said to Elisha, that for you to receive what you are asking, you must see me ascending. But both of them, they saw the same vision, but they, they both did not know what they were going to receive. Listen. When Elisha saw his master being taken, he knew that he would receive the double portion of the spirit of Elijah. To be able to can do more than Elijah. Hallelujah. 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 If Elisha did not see him taken, it would have meant that he was not called into that office. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't receive the mantle which is not of your office unless if it is imparted to you. Because Paul said, I'm coming to impart spiritual gifts to you. If it is not your office, you can receive it. But there can be impartation to receive it. Hallelujah. 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 You need a mentor because you need to be successful in your leadership. The Bible says you are the head and not the tail. Not so. Which means you are the leader. The Bible says you are appointed by God to reign and rule with Christ. Hallelujah. But for you to be successful in your respective calling, you need a mentor. Hallelujah. You can still achieve what you can achieve, but with the aid of your mentor, you can do more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we read Joshua chapter 1 verse 7? Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Mentorship. Joshua was under Moses. And check the things which Joshua was able to do because of his submission to his mentor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, be careful to do the things which my servant Moses has instructed you. What is your mentor instructing you? What instructions are you receiving from your mentor? You must know that whatever that is spiritual, it does not decay. 
Spiritual things don't decay. However, there is a past truth, the present truth, and the future truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 33 verse 11. Exodus 33 verse 11. It says, The Lord will speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses will, will return to the camp. But his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Joshua did not leave the tent. He remained under the same cloud which Moses was under. And that cloud is the cloud which descended for God to speak to Moses. They met in the tabernacle of meeting. There was a mercy seat from which God was speaking to Moses. And the mercy seat was covered by the cherubims. Hallelujah. And the Bible says God dwells between the cherubims. When the cloud descended upon the mercy seat, Joshua remained under the cloud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you to can do greater than your mentor, you need to remain under the cloud. You can't do greater than your mentor when you are outside of the cloud. It's not possible. Hallelujah. You need a mentor because you need to be effective in your calling. Whatever God has called you to do, you must be effective. Let us read Acts chapter 17 verse 6. That will be our last scripture. We may rise, rise on our feet. As she's reading the last scripture, we can rise on our feet. Acts chapter 17, verse 6, it says, But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city official, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here. Now, the disciples were mentored by Jesus. And the Bible says, through that mentorship, they were able to contend the world upside down. Hallelujah. Speak to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you need a mentor. You need a mentor. 